thing I did want to talk to you about, and it's something I want to talk to everybody. The way things are going in the world now with uh, importing becoming a, a risky business, so to speak, even, right? And I'm not trying to throw anybody down that imports, we, we have to do it. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's bad, but I think it's going to get a lot harder to do. Um, things like your tissue culturing, stuff like that is going to save uh, so many imports. As we know, most of our aquatic plants come from Singapore, Taiwan, overseas. Same with a lot of our fish. A lot of our, as we were talking earlier about uh, 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 Odessa barbs and whatnot, and I've been breeding them, And and but who, who breeds Odessa barbs to sell them and try to make a profit, right? No, nobody does, so they get imported uh, because you get them for pennies on the dollar when you do that. Um, but I think we're going to need to have to start if we want to maintain some of these types of fish. This is, I guess, a, a little bit of a roll call here. Of maybe uh, as hobbyists, we need to at least keep strains going to be able to trade amongst ourselves anyways for some fish that may not be able to be imported in the future or, or with great difficulty and cost. Um, so, yeah, it's great with these tissue cultures. And I think more hobbyists should maybe start at least keeping one or if they have a big fish room, keep one or two tanks aside just for something that's not going to make you any money. And, but you're going to help the hobby out by keeping some locally bred strains going. What do you think about that? I think you make excellent points. You, you're, you're hitting some nails on, on some heads. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I'll take right there with you. We got to start um, not relying so much on that, that, that cheap import. You know, yeah. because it's an easy buck. It really is. If you, you know, you fill out all your paperwork and you jump through the hoops and it's expensive and time consuming because I've done it long ago. You can import animals and, and it's very doable. You can do it all day long. But what about when stuff like this starts happening? Right. I mean, this this is really shining a light on how vulnerable how we are. Right. So just, just how precariously. We're purchased, we're purchased, excuse me, just how precariously we're perched on this, on the edge of this, this globalization model. It, it doesn't, it works great if everything is running fine, right? Mm -hmm. But one little hiccup, oh, it starts to shudder and fall over. So I think you make very, very good points. Uh, it's for that reason uh, I started to talk about, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I could, whatever, mm -hmm. right? That's why I, I share uh, guppies, this guppy strain that I import. I want to share it out to people who follow, you know, who are, who are subs of mine. Yeah. Um, and I want to share it with, with anybody who, who will take them, really, um, to get that strain out there. People are going to start breeding these, right? And maybe we don't have to import these things from Thailand anymore because it was expensive. It was expensive. Yeah. No, it, it's very expensive. And it, there's the whole issue of having to get the parasites out of them, get uh, the bacterial infections out of them, get get all this crap out of them that fish always come with when they're imported. I don't care. They always do. They, they're, always. They're, bred, they're bred in such large, large quantities that uh, they, they can't possibly keep up on it. So you have to yeah. go through a whole preventative program. Uh, when you bring them in, everything else, if you could just buy those guppies from the guy across town or even one or two towns over and exactly exactly i mean fish tube is uh is an amazing resource for exactly what we're talking about right here uh you know uh because uh there are a lot of fish tubers out there you know i'm, I'm a plant guy just like you guppy guy you know micro propagation guy and all that those are my strengths you know and if anybody would like to you know, reach out to me or to, to you. I know that you're just as supportive. I've heard you, I've, I've heard you a, a hundred times say it. Um, you know, if people will do that and, and, and learn to like lean a little bit, right, on, on fellow hobbyists, yep. I think we can maybe start start to maybe make this thing take off a little bit more, you know. Information that you've shared with everybody tonight on, on uh, tissue culturing, you know, that, that, I wouldn't even thought of tissue culturing was a word when 20 years ago, right? Like uh, we can do amazing not. things right here at home now. The information's there. Uh, so I, I I would love to see, I would love to see 
more of this, more of uh, locally bred stuff. I'd love to see more of what we're doing right now too, uh, because I know that uh, aquarium clubs across the continent, uh, Canada and the US, where we're not meeting now, we're not sharing our ideas face to face anymore. Um, we're missing out on that. So I'm hoping we can fill a void perhaps this way, any other way. By the way, everybody throw your shout out in the uh, in the chat. If you are a, a Cram Club affiliate, throw it on there, represent. 